Welcome back to the show, my friends. This is Thomas Nelson, your host. I am your Postcards from Success liaison to the local San Diego entrepreneurial and small business uh, world, as well as a little bit about San Diego real estate. But today, my guest is Knight Campbell, and Knight is the founder of Karen Leadership Strategies. Uh, he is 10 years in the Navy and is currently a lieutenant commander in the Naval Reserves. And uh, Knight, I want to welcome you to the show, and thanks for being here. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks for having me. I also want to congratulate you on the birth of your brand new baby daughter, and it and her name is Scotty. Scotty, Scotty Ayla. That's right. All right, and congratulations to Leone, your wife, who I know is right there with you. And I should mention you're at the world famous Torrey Pines uh, Beach Reserve. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful out here. So, what is your company all about? Yeah, so we we do leadership development. And if you can imagine traditional leadership coaching and team development, we do all that. But our passion is to take leaders outdoors and translate their experiences into meaningful growth as people and as leaders. So it's a lot of fun, super, super uh, effective research based, but also adventure based. Okay. So who, who typically comes to you? I mean, obviously you're looking for leaders, but how do they find you and from what world are they coming from? Yeah, we're a brand new business in San Diego, so we're reaching out and networking with all kinds of people, but it seems like the, the ideal client, the people that are really drawn to us are people who want to become better leaders. They know they've got more potential, and they don't really want to be in a conference room. They don't want to spend their time doing trust falls, things like that. They definitely don't want PowerPoint. We're all about no PowerPoint. Uh, they want to do something. They want to do something that works. Uh, and when they see that someone with a lot of experience and knowledge about leadership development will take them rock climbing, take them hiking, take them mountaineering, they get excited about that. So what, what, what uh, was the uh, genesis of this company for you? I mean, obviously, you, you've spent many years in the Navy, and thank you for your service. But, you. Uh, but uh, you know, how, did, how was this born in your brain? How, how did you bring this to fruition? Yeah, that's a great question, Thomas. I, uh, I've always wanted to work for myself. I've always wanted to start a business. And for a long time, it was a coffee shop. Maybe we'll circle back to that. I still love coffee and drink it probably way too much. <laughs> um, and in my experience in the Navy, I got, I got the opportunity to teach leadership at the Naval Academy after flying uh, and deploying a couple of times. And I really just was passionate about creating leaders. And I, I worked with the mountaineering team. I took some teams out, some groups out to Mount Washington and New Hampshire in uh, kind of whiteout blizzard conditions and saw the power that I had to help them become better leaders and figure out who they were and gain a little more self-awareness. Uh, I've been a mountaineer. My wife and I started trying to climb the, the highest point in every all states, all 50 states. Wow. In 2006. Uh, so I've been a mountaineer for a long time, and that's been really formative in my life. And uh, I actually had a leadership coach and I was talking to her and I was like, Sharon, what do I do? Like, I'm not sure where I want to go. I'm getting out of the military. I want to spend time with my family. Uh, I want to be outdoors. I love this leadership thing. And she's like, why don't you take leaders outdoors and coach them? And I was like, that's why we need leadership coaches because they give you some clarity. And that was a, a huge like light bulb for me to take people outside and develop leaders that way. So uh, I started going down that road. I got to, to apply and get into National Outdoor Leadership School, which has been an amazing journey. Started teaching for REI, got my certificate at Georgetown to coach leaders, and I'm just putting all that together into something that's really fun and really effective. So now, um, can anyone come out? Do they have to have any experience in any of these activities? Yeah, I think that's a huge hurdle for leaders because they're like, I don't rock climb. That sounds terrifying. Right. <laughs> But I've got a lot of experience teaching at REI, people who have never climbed before in their lives, uh, know how to keep them safe, know how to encourage them and support them and also challenge them to overcome their fear and, and get some really great results. So uh, I think an experience that speaks to me was taking my mother out and she's never climbed. And uh, she got like a foot off the ground. She's like, this is not for me. <laughs> I gave her a lot of support and encouragement and kept talking through like, Hey, these ropes are here. They're going to keep you safe. And she made it to the top and she still talks about how empowering that was, which mm. is really rewarding to me. 
So, so people, I mean, uh, the whole idea of this is get out of your comfort zone and learn something. So I imagine that that's the first lesson in itself is to actually get in to these activities. Um, Absolutely. So how do people decide, like, do you decide for them what's the best activity uh, to, to teach them or do they come to you with a specific request? We can do a little bit of both. I, I really pride, take pride in our company being very customized. I think there are lots of leadership programs out there and they say, this is the 12 step program to become a leader. And that doesn't work because all leaders are different. Uh, so I like to have a conversation It's free. We sit down, we talk about what their goals are, what they might enjoy. Uh, I give them some encouragement, a little bit of pushing to help them see possibilities in different activities. And then they choose what works best for them. And that might just be a couple hours of hiking with their team and mission trails. Like it doesn't need to be this crazy expedition. Maybe one day it will be. That's my hope. So you just brought something up that brings up another question for me. Then um, you're, you're um, taking these leaders to the next level, but you're also doing team building then. Right. Yeah, we do both. I, I love leadership coaching one-on-one. -on -one. I think it's powerful, uh, extremely effective way to get leaders to, to get clarity, more self-awareness, more emotional intelligence. But taking a team rock climbing is really cool. And watching them have to trust each other, like yeah. literally with their lives. Yeah. Obviously, I'm keeping them safe and I'm watching too, but that's how it feels. And, it, and to some extent, it's true. And people just get to know each other on this completely different level. So that's pretty fun too. Yeah, you get that band of brothers things going. Exactly. Shared, shared adversity. And um, I should mention now, or my, my next question should be, this is for both men and women, correct? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked that, actually. Absolutely, all genders are welcome. And actually, uh, our ideal client, beyond the person who really wants something different uh, from the normal trust falls in PowerPoint, is professional women. Uh, it's pretty cool in rock climbing. Women typically are better than men and they don't expect that they come in and say oh I don't have upper body strength I can never be a good climber we're actually being a good climber it takes footwork and balance and poise and a calm head and often they excel where men don't <laughs> yeah. ego thing like oh I have to beat on my chest and I'm strong and they get tired after climbing once uh, so it's pretty cool to see women just light up and feel that empowerment when they do that and I think it's a powerful space to help them build confidence who they, in who they are and become more authentic leaders. So yeah, we, we definitely, especially with my wife, she's uh, the president of the company. She's also a student in medical school and a proud new mother and a former, and she would say still Marine. Uh, so she's oh. an inspirational woman and uh, she has a lot to offer in terms of coaching and, and helping women to success as well. So a Navy guy got a Marine to marry him, huh? <laughs> Yeah, and I, I see a lot of friction already for Scotty. Uh, she's already got like digital camouflage bit. Like, <laughs> well, um, another question, I, you might have answered it, but I want to clarify it. Um, is this typically a one-on-one -on -one experience or is this typically a group experience if it's just leadership? Yeah, uh, it's, it's both. And when we do a group experience, it's not – team building as in we're going to go out and have fun as a team. It's team building as in we're going to go out and have facilitated meaningful conversation about what our purpose is, what the roles informal and formal are that we should and do fill and how we can grow into those roles to make ourselves uh, more task and purpose driven, uh, things like that. We have really meaningful conversations as well as having a lot of fun and getting to know each other. So actually an, an ideal engagement for me is taking a leader rock climbing, mountaineering, hiking, and doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and getting to really know that leader and what their priorities are, their vision might be, and then, and then taking their team out with that knowledge and building on that and doing a team activity at the end of that engagement. So, and then would, is this something that they would do in some sort of a series or is this a lot of one-offs? Do they come to you once and maybe, maybe like they come to you once a year or do you get people that sign up for like a regular kind of thing with you? Yeah, ideally it's, it's going to be a lot of shorter engagements where we go hiking, maybe do six hours of rock climbing here in Mission Gorge, uh, maybe once a quarter or something like that. And then yearly, typically good leaders want to kind of take a step back look at their strategy, look at what's going on, where they actually want to go and get, get away from 
working in the business and work on the business more. And that's where we have the opportunities to go camping at Joshua Tree, do some climbing, do some strategic thinking with the team, things like that. So, yeah, a little bit of both. I'm happy to do a one-off. I hope that people want to start a relationship with the company. Yeah. I think that's where most of the growth happens. Yeah, yeah. The, um, then the, the next question I would have is, uh, for the uh, for the white collar guy that doesn't even have hiking shoes, like what, what do they, what what can they expect when they come out to you? I mean, do they need to bring gear with them, or, or like how do they prepare for what they're about to go through with you? Yeah, we we provide all the technical gear for sure, rock climbing stuff, safety gear, ropes. That's all covered uh, in in the engagement. Yeah, we don't have like hiking shoes for everyone, right. but I'm very happy. Uh, to do a little bit of consulting and help them out with what might work for them and their budget and, and what, you know, if this is something they think maybe they want to do for a long time, I might steer them towards something that's a little more sturdy and, and has more longevity. And if it's something they want to just try out real quick, I'd say, well, maybe we do a shorter hike and whatever shoes you can do, do it in and, and see if it's something that fits. Okay. So, so they can, you know, if I, if I was to call you, you'd kind of, um, give me an orientation on the phone so I can properly uh, equip myself and show up and then you have the rest of the gear that I would need for that activity. Oh, absolutely. And, okay. and we send out packets and everything with all the, all the gear that is needed and what we provide and all the information for the event. You don't, you don't show up having no idea what's going on. Yeah. No, what, what, I mean, I know everyone probably shows up with their own, uh, well, I, I like to call it head trash that they're trying to get rid of and trying to get past um, so yeah. obviously everyone's different, but what, what can the average person expect to walk away with from this uh, team building experience um, or the leadership experience? Like, what, is there any kind of curriculum that you take them through that they, they're definitely going to learn a few things no matter what they come with? Yeah, we, we like to focus on self-awareness, which is the first part of emotional intelligence, hmm. and, and kind of go into that where they are how they manage their emotions, how they're socially aware, and how they manage relationships. That's a big thing that we like to focus on. Uh, in terms of teams, I think identifying a purpose, a shared vision, and identifying what roles, like their formal roles, like the COO and the CFO, and their informal roles, like the person who encourages people or the person who's the realist and says, hey, people, this isn't going to work. Uh, and putting our fingers as a team on who those people are and how they can perform and how other people can support those roles mm. is pretty important. So I like to emphasize those things. And after we've gone into that a little bit, it's really what the leader is looking for. I've seen uh, a CEO I'm working with right now is, is actually an all women team, which is awesome. Mm. And she's looking to empower them as women and as, as leaders. And also she's saying, hey, my people don't take initiative. They come to me and ask questions all the time. How do we make this more of a purpose-driven people being empowered and taking more initiative? Right. Uh, so we have that conversation with the leader and then build that into the curriculum, do some research, reach, read HBR, read the literature in the management uh, reviews and things like that and come out with some research-based things that they can do. I would imagine it might be an eye-opener to find out that sometimes their people might not be taking the initiative because of the leadership that yeah versus they, they didn't hire the wrong people they just didn't educate their people properly about what they can and can't do yeah there's there's typically a component of that for sure and it's hard to tease that out and it takes it takes a little bit of coaching for sure so you're dealing with a lot of leaders so i'm uh, i'm assuming c ceos and as you mentioned coo cfos so um and with all those EOs and FOs, you're getting a lot of egos. So yeah. how do you, do you have to break people down a little before you can work with them? Or I mean, you know, I mean, how do you, wow. you must get some testosterone showing up there. Yeah, there's, there is so much coming up for me right now. Um, what, first, I'd, I'd like to say, you know, there are a lot of military organizations or, or vets who do these types of things and they all do really awesome things. Um, but I'm not about that boot camp experience, really. I'm not here to break people down in the, the military sense. Uh, what I what I love and my purpose really is getting people outside. I think mm -hmm. being outside makes people better people. And if you're a better person, you're a better leader. You're going to be listening and in tune with your people. You're going to have 
them as your priority and helping them to develop their potential. Uh, and your company, your bottom line is going to benefit from that, but it's not going to be your focus. Your focus is going to be, how can I take care of my people? Right. And outdoors does that. And that, that breaks down egos more than anything I could do. I think like mm. you're, you have a big ego and you, you get on a rock climb and you're halfway up and you're terrified. That's all you're focused on. You're not focused on the ego anymore. When you're yeah. halfway up the mountain and you're dead tired, uh, your ego goes away and simply getting to the top of a mountain and looking out on this expansive and awe inspiring landscape. Uh, there's this motion called awe and it's pretty interesting to read about. And one of the things that it does is shifts your perspective. And all of a sudden, even if you're the CEO of the biggest company in the world, you think, wow, none of this cares. Like this glacier carved, beautiful valley in Yosemite does not care about my company or right. about me or my leadership. And I'm just a very tiny piece of this existence in this world. And that's what I'm really passionate about is taking leaders out and showing them that because it's pretty powerful and inspiring and it really gives them a different perspective. I like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, half don't spend there long before our company and long after. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully it stays for a while too. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and that brings up a question. Um, are you strictly Southern California or, I mean, do you, so do you get people that come to you from all over? That's a great question. I'd love to. Um, we're working on that. Uh, and most of their stuff is in Southern California. This is a beautiful spot. Yeah. It's nice. I don't have to worry about canceling for rain generally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can kind of find something fun to do outdoors at all times of the year. Uh, at the same time, like my wife and I, we're passionate about the Pacific Northwest. I teach with Knowles up in Alaska. Wow. If the leader says, hey, I'd like to go for a week-long backpacking trip in Alaska, we can make a pretty powerful experience out of that. If they want to bring their team, even better. So we certainly are open to taking expeditions and longer things, longer engagements with leaders and teams. Okay. To be fair, though, most people are, are working hard on the bottom line and on their business, and they just don't have time to do that. That's yeah. kind of why I really want this company to exist, to provide that experience in six hours at Mission Gorge. Yeah. So, so and, you know, is it mostly hiking and rock climbing? Is there any other activities that you uh, bring to the experience? Yeah, my, my forte is mountaineering, hiking, rock climbing. Uh, could do some mountain biking, things like that. It gets tricky with insurance. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and to be honest, like, if a leader came and they said, I really want to kayak, that's all I want to do, I could go find someone. I have friends who guide kayaking, who do this for a living, uh, and I would just contract with them and create an engagement that works for that leader. So it doesn't have to be rock climbing, mountaineering, hiking type stuff, but that's my specialty. Okay, fair enough. Um, I wanted to shift gears and I want to talk about you for a minute um, because, I mean, th this isn't, I'm, I'm getting inspired just interviewing you. So I, I want to ask, what's a, what's a daily habit that you subscribe to that you attribute to your success? Wow, well, maybe I'll give you a daily habit that I'm trying to do. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. That. Uh, well, I guess I'll, get, I'll say two. One, our dog is awesome. She's two and she's full of energy. And she wakes up at 5.30 every morning and whines downstairs saying, hey, the day started, let's go for a run. <laughs> uh, so it's pretty awesome. She's my accountability partner and I go and work out and run pretty much every day. Uh, and there's a great, I love this book, uh, Lead Yourself First. It's about solitude and the importance of getting out and being alone in leadership. And that's my time running, working out, hiking, whatever, where I'm not talking to anyone. I don't have any screens in front of my face. Uh, and I love like you can come up with a problem or a question, like where do I want to take this business? You can run and not think about it once, get back to the house and be like, oh, I know where I want to take this business. Like that's just the way our, work, our brains work is that intuitive thing. So I think running is great. The other thing that my coach started to instill in me and now as a coach, I start trying to instill in other people and I still am working on building this practice. I have this pretty cool little journal uh, that I like to give to clients as well. And the first three things are, what am I grateful for? Oh yeah. Every morning after coffee, that's the other ritual. <laughs> yeah. uh, down like, Hey, these are the three things that I'm grateful for. And it just starts your day on the right note 
remind you of that you have a lot to be grateful for no matter what else is going on. And uh, that's, that's been pretty awesome. I love it. Uh, I, you know, and I've, I've heard more people talk about starting their day off with gratitude and there's, I mean, if they're successful and they're telling you that, you know, success leaves clues, folks. <laughs> you know? um, what, uh, I, now, since you are a coach, and, and I, I myself get professionally coached too, um, I like asking this question, uh, especially to coaches. What's a productive day look like to you? In your world, what's a productive day look like? What's a productive day? Well, this is something else that I'm incorporating in my life right now. And it says in my journal, if, if I do this thing, I will be successful today. And you're not allowed to put a thing. It, you know, we talk about smart goals all the time, and those are right. great for sure. But this isn't a smart goal. It's a, I want to work on focusing better. I want to be more joyful. I want to be mindful in the interactions I have with other people today. Things like that. And so writing something like that down and remembering that throughout the day, no matter what my smart goals are, has been pretty empowering. Well, you just mentioned something that brought up a question in my mind. Uh, you mentioned joyful and we talked about gratitude. So what brings you joy in your business? What's the most joyful thing about what you do? Man, this whole business is amazing. First, uh, I take people outside yeah. on adventures and we talk about leadership and making the world a better place. So that brings me a lot of joy. I think for me, like what we mentioned with people who don't climb and don't think that this is accessible to them and they get out and they get on a rock climb and almost invariably they get three moves up, they fall or they just say, hold me tight. I can't make it any further. And I tighten up the rope and they lean back and they're like, just let me down. I can't do it. Uh, and I always, this is like a script almost. And I say, <laughs> okay, that's cool. Why don't you just take a quick break, rest for a minute. And then I'll let you down. And they take a break and some of them just naturally start climbing again. They don't even say anything, which is bad. I teach them to say climbing when they start climbing, but I forgive them. Uh, and the rest of them say, oh, I'm going to give it one more try. And they usually make it to the top after that. And I love just that experience of holding that space where I'm supporting them. I'm, I'm saying, okay, well, you can come down. Like if that's what feels right to you. And I'm happy to hold you here for a little bit and then you can continue and watching them succeed. Uh, it's, it's just awesome. It really brings a lot of joy to me. I would imagine those breakthroughs must be awesome to watch. Yeah. 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 Well, what, what is Knight Campbell's definition of success? Not what the world says it is. What's your definition of success? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, well, first of all, living with my family up in Washington state, that's success. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's your, uh, that's your big goal? Pretty far down the road. All right. I think just being mindful and present and joyful every day, that would be success. No matter what I'm doing, we're going to have successes. We're going to have setbacks and frustrations. Um, being thankful for this awesome opportunity, this awesome world, my amazing family, my loving wife, my hopefully loving daughter. Mostly she just screams and coos at me right now. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. I think we'll get there. You'll get there. They uh, become yeah. daddy girls. <laughs> <laughs> being being joyful, it's hard work. And when you're able to do it, everything else is secondary. So that's success to me. Yeah, well said. I mean, yeah, I think people expect joy to come to them, and it's something you got to go out and find. You you it, you got to work for joy and happiness. It's not just you don't wake up happy. You you know you can wake up and make yourself happy, but um, you know, I'm impressed with, I mean, I can just hear in your language, um, you've got a lot of good experience as a coach and, and as a leadership coach. I, I, I believe wholeheartedly that you, you're doing some good for people. Um, Mike, one of my last questions for you, because I, I want to let you get back to your family. I know you're out hiking. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you're living what you do. You're out there hiking Torrey Pines. I love it. <laughs> but um you mentioned earlier there's a lot of um, military-based um, organizations like this. How do you separate yourself? How do you communicate your value and bring in your clients versus all the other choices out there? Yeah, wow. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and make yep. a risky move. Uh, I do a little bit of a, a, switch in, a bait and switch on people. Um, I love challenging people. I love that military aspect. It's a part of me. 
And I think people see me and they're like, oh, Knight is going to challenge me. He's military. Uh, he's going to be kind of the boot camp experience. And then I put them on a rock climb that challenges them. It's really fun. And then all of a sudden I'm like, so let's talk about feelings. And they're like, whoa. And that's what's about <laughs> this, right? Like, yeah. that's what's important. Leaders, they don't need to know to challenge themselves more or to work harder. That's not what's holding them back. It's being in tune with their emotions, being able, able to recognize when fear is coming on them or when they're losing sight of the big picture because they're really happy or whatever it is. Uh, talking about how we feel and how we relate to other people. Like leadership's a relationship. Uh, it's not a checklist. It's not a set of steps. You can't lead people like that. You need to relate with them. You need to care and, and honestly love them. Uh, yeah. And if you're not doing that, you're not going to be a great leader. So I provide all that other kind of military background, the strategy, and we'll talk about OODA loops. I love that stuff, but we're going to talk about emotions and feelings and we're going to dig deep into what matters. Well, I'm going to hit you with a couple last questions before we wrap it up here. Um, and based on what you were just saying to me, I, I want to flip it on you and ask you, what's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Cool. I'm going to have to think about this one for a minute, Thomas. Or something that comes to mind that guides you. People, people uh, always ask that. And to be honest, the advice that my first boss in the Navy gave me always pops in my head. So mm -hmm. I'm going to get that. I'm going to clear the air with that. Yeah. He said, don't screw it up. And that, that's pretty good advice. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's, 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 it's very clear. <laughs> it, it's very clear, and I think about it often. I don't think like about what I'm going to give my daughter as if you remember one thing. I, I think being authentic to yourself is, is the best advice that I get and what I want my daughter to take uh, when she hears advice from me is be who you are and be happy about it, and everything else falls into place. Yeah. No, that's good advice. Well, um, is there a question I should have asked you that I haven't that you want to relay some information about? Um, where's the best place to rock climb in Southern California? Obviously, okay. yeah. Where where is the best place? <laughs> <laughs> Mission Gorge is great, uh, but I really love going up to Taquitos. It's little known, but it's huge, beautiful granite. And uh, we actually just got our permit for Karen Leadership to take people out to Joshua Tree. Wow. It's beautiful out there. When the weather's good, when it's not, when it's hot, don't go. Yeah. Never, it's brutal. But uh, as the winter and, and rock climbing season starts up, it's really beautiful. The desert nights, the clear air can be pretty inspiring. And wh where's that, uh, where's that uh, range that you just mentioned the, to rock, rock climbing? It's this giant rock in Idlewild. So it's only oh. it's less than two hours away from here. And yep. People don't know about it, but it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Wow. So, well, I really, I, I could probably keep you on here another half hour, but I know you're there with your family and I want to let you go. And we got some great information out of you. Uh, for people that want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to reach out to you? Yeah, our website is karenleadership.com. Uh, that's got all the information. You can get in touch that way. You can schedule a quick call. It's free. Talk to me for up to an hour about what your situation is and whether or not this might be a good fit. Um, Email is contact at karenleadership.com. Pretty easy. Good to remember. And if you talk to me, you're probably going to get a sticker. So <laughs> outdoors folks get really stoked about that. If you're not an outdoors folk yet, you will be once you get a sticker. Nice. Where, by the way, where did you come up with the name? Where's the name come from? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. That's the question that you should have asked. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, so I mentioned taking people up on Mount Washington. It's, it's the world's worst weather. Uh, when we took them, it would be wintertime, a sense only, and it would be like negative 80 degrees of wind chill, complete whiteout conditions, and people will walk off the mountain if they don't know where to go. So there are these huge stacks of rocks that are periodically stacked along the route to get to the top, and, and like six foot tall stacks of rocks, and they're called cairns. And I, I searched for probably six uh. months trying to figure out what should the name be, and then as I'm helping to develop leaders from the Naval Academy on this trip, searching for the next Karen. I was like, Oh, of course, like people are trying to find their way through the fog, through the friction of war, if you will, 
through all of their emotions to be a great leaders. And they just need Karen's along the way. And this is a perfect name. So. Oh, I love it. I, ne- I never knew that. So you, they, they stack rocks so that people don't lose their way on the, on the trail. So yeah. They know where they go. Yeah. It's actually a Gaelic thing. And we were in Scotland once and we saw like the first Karen's They're like 30 feet tall. And the tribes wow. would use those, like go to the Karen and go left to get to the next village. Um, and it's pretty common, like mountaineers, rock climbers will leave little stacks of rocks where you turn off of the main trail to get to where you want to go climb. I never knew that. So I probably shouldn't have let my son pick up those rocks and throw them around. <laughs> when we were... <laughs> hey, it keeps it interesting. Right? <laughs> well, that's great. I learned something just in asking that. So, um, well, so once again, it's Karen leadership strategies. And um, if you have more uh, questions, um, Knight will be happy to answer them. It sounds like you'll talk to people up to an hour. I will put all the contact information in the show notes so people uh, can find you easily. Um, I want to thank you for 10 years of service in the Navy and your continued service uh, in the reserves. Thanks, Thomas. And thank you for your time here uh, and um, bringing your family along. I know they're back there somewhere. And uh, I want to thank you for being on the show today. Thank you. I really appreciate the invitation and I enjoyed it. And we're going to get back to walking on the beach here. Sounds good. All right, my friend. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.